progress of the 4500 gallon <laughs> the beast is further along and actually I think you'd be pretty excited there's been a lot of serious progress and it keeps going now and uh, not only that in this video we're also going to look at the filtration on the tank behind me and a few of the other tanks and you'll notice that I have different filtration techniques on different tanks and uh, I'm striving for a, a tank that runs itself as much as possible using nature's techniques to to filter itself and to basically create an ecosystem that's the, that's the goal. I try a few different ways uh, to do, achieve that. I've been doing it over many years now, so I can actually give you some good feedback on what works, what doesn't work, and you know what I've found to be the true, you know, found to happen over the last few years. And then I'll also show you some tanks that the filter's different than the other ones, and it's not really because I want it that way, it's just sort of evolved that way, but, and you know, we'll show you the pros and cons of that as well. So we'll go into all that, and we'll get into all the massive details of the 4500 gallon, and we'll talk next steps on the 4500 gallon, because it's getting pretty exciting now. Okay, what is next for the 4500 gallon aquarium? Well, we have a few things to do before we start doing the uh, plywood sheathing. So we need to finish the top here. We need to have four layers of, uh, two by six built up, just like we did on the bottom. And you can see here, we've built one frame for the first window. And of course, we need to make three more of those. So you can see here, the frame for the glass installation is made out of uh, treated two by sixes. And you can see on the inside, that creates a lip for the, uh, the glass to go up against silicone, up against all the way around. And you might be asking why treated two by sixes when all the rest of this lumber is not treated. Well, simply because to try to get a 16 foot two by six uh, that's not treated and you have it be straight is like impossible. And it saves a lot of money because the, the, the length of these windows, it works out better to use that length of lumber. So if I used uh, shorter two by two by fours, uh, and if I said two by six, I meant two by four for try to get a straight 16 foot two by four, unless it's uh, treated, um, then uh, I, if I use the, the smaller lumber, I would be wasting a ton of lumber and money. So always trying to, you know, calculate uh, the best return, uh, you know, on, on, on the dollar by getting the right wood and, you know, measuring everything out and obviously uh, figuring out how many cuts you can get out of each piece of wood. So, so what I'm gonna do now is get the top finished, the, get the windows built in, and then next we're gonna build the interior wall over here for the wetland filter. And uh, that's gonna be pretty awesome building. I know a lot of people are excited for this big wetland filter, and I am as well. Uh, I haven't showed you guys yet, but I do have one running inside in the 315, which is the, the tank that's the result of the step-by-step -step DIY build, and it's doing awesome, and I have high hopes for it here as well. So that's going to be an exciting point of this build. Even beyond just the tank, the, the, the filter system is going to be something special and uh, low maintenance too, which is awesome. So I'm going to get to uh, finishing the top and finishing out all the framing for all the glass windows. Okay, in terms of filtration, I want to start with the Malawi River Aquarium. This is the 125 gallon African Planet Aquarium. And you can see that, yes, we have plants uh, growing up the wall and on the top. We have lots of plants inside the aquarium, and of course, we have a sump full of plants as well. So obviously that's a major part of the filtration system here, but what's the rest of the filtration? Well, we have water flow. So we have an additional pump pushing water, and then we have the return from the sump. And then if you wheel around to the side here, and you look at the overflow, there's no sponges or anything. We're just draining everything straight into this first chamber. Uh, so this is really important. This is a moving bed filter where we're highly oxygenating that chamber. So you can see we have an air pump over here that's infusing tons and tons of air plus the water rushing down from the aquarium. So what's happening here is that you've cre we've created an area with enormous amounts of aerobic bacteria and everything that comes down, whether it be food waste or, or, or uh, excrement from the fish, it's all getting chewed up by that, that bacteria. That bacteria is going to town, it's breaking it down, and it's returning the nutrients from, from that material, the nitrate, the phosphate, everything, back into the water, which is then being exported or uptake, uptaken from the plants. 
So that's the key to this aquarium is that <clears throat> we don't worry about uh, trying to block the physical material from breaking down. Uh, we don't try to displace nitrates with water changes. We use nature's technique. We use bacteria. We have zones that are highly efficient for bacteria to break down uh, the waste and the excess food into things that the plants can use, which the plants then uptake and grow, thus exporting that out of the water and returning clean water to the aquarium. So you can see that this tank has been running now a few years and I think it's it's beautiful. I mean, first of all, you can see it's it's supporting a thriving colony of African cichlids who have bred in here many times and continue to do so. And the tank has never uh, blinked an eye. It's always kept up with the load. In fact, the big problem with this aquarium is I have to dose nitrates. <laughs> I have to overfeed these guys to try to produce enough nitrates to, to supply all these plants and I'm actually having to dose dose nitrates along with fertilizer to keep it going so it's one of those cool things where the the actual problem is that it just doesn't have enough <laughs> waste you know I can't produce enough waste with these guys so uh, but that's a good problem to have because the side effects of that are I never scraped this glass I mean it's not perfectly clean but it's pretty darn clean and it's all this way just by itself I don't have to scrape the glass, I don't have to do water changes, I just top off water, and my, my major pain point is just trying to you know, provide enough nitrate and fertilizer to keep all the plants healthy. Oh, and I don't have to change any filter pads in the back because there are none. So I consider the 125 gallon Blaue River a big success story in terms of its filtration and one that I emulate parts of it in, in all my other tanks. Before I knock out those last two window frames, I want to show you the key here with all these pieces is all the overlap. You can see how we're overlapping and the verticals are always supporting the horizontals as well as being screwed and glued. And then you can see we come to the other side and it works its way right back up, right back down, over to the other side, right back up, and then it's going to go right back down. So uh, the key with this is all these pieces, individual pieces, when they're put together correctly, screwed and glued, they become incredibly, incredibly strong. A lot of times people uh, maybe uh, don't give credit, you know, for how strong two by fours, two by sixes, you know, half inch, three quarter inch plywood really is uh, if it's braced, uh, framed, and adhered correctly. It can be quite, quite strong. So just want to point that out that uh, there, there is a method to the madness, you know, when you're building these frames, as well as you know, we talked about I'm overkilling the screws, but the reason I'm doing that is the, the window is sitting in this channel and what's keeping the window in is this frame. So the strength of this frame is absorbing all of that water pressure pushing on that window. Now it's awesome to build it that way for the glass because you have a big fat gasket that it pushes against. The water is working with you to seal the glass and you don't have to have perfect framing because that big thick gasket can eat up any little you know eighth inch imperfections things like that so it's not a problem but it is important that that frame can take that weight because the only thing holding all that in is this frame so bracing it correctly screwing and gluing it and uh, not finding out the minimum amount of screws it takes to get the job done is very key so another one of my aquariums is the 220 gallon discus aquarium and you can see here on the front of the glass there's a lot of algae there. Even with some snails in there, there's still a lot of algae and you can see on the wood, the algae is growing back. So as I'm dosing for the plants, I'm getting the return of that algae in this aquarium. So this uh, aquarium uses a lot of the techniques of the 125 gallon Malawi River, but not all of them. So this is one where the filtration system is not necessarily what I want, but what I sort of inherited. I just was already using this trickle tower and you can see I've got a media pad in there where I'm extracting out some of the media before it breaks down. And then I get into a sump system that is more similar uh, to what I like to have with my vegetable filters, but it's smaller and it's connected with two uh, different containers that aren't optimal for this sump, but I had a leak in the previous sump, so this is something I had to build in an afternoon to keep the tank running. And uh, I was also using floating plants, which you can see are always sucked into my overflow causing problems. And they do actually thrive in here, and then they cover the top, they block the light, so they're just problematic with this design for the tank. So what am I doing to bring this aquarium more in line uh, with what I'm looking to do? Well, 
I'm gonna have to leave the bottom filter for now because I'm busy building the 4500, but when I get a chance, I'm gonna redo the sump and get rid of this whole front chamber and I'm gonna do a, a oxidated moving bed. I'm basically gonna emulate the sump system that's in the 125 Malawi River. And one of the steps I've already taken is I added pothos to the top of the aquarium. So we're gonna up the plant uh, material here. We're gonna up, we're gonna up the uh, nutrient export from the aquarium and we're gonna shade a little bit of that light. So I wanna keep dosing because I'm trying to grow my swords and my grasses in here. Uh, so I'm gonna keep going with that and I'm gonna try to balance the aquarium uh, with those techniques. So right now I actually do some water changes uh, for specifically for ex, uh, nutrient export on this aquarium. So that shows you, in my opinion, that it's not that balanced, you know. I'm, ha I'm having to step in and help nature out on this aquarium, uh, which is something I try not to do. So there's work to go on the 220 Discus Aquarium uh, to bring it more in line with what we're doing in the 125. So I'm just inside the filter box doing uh, some work getting the main baffle in, and I thought I'd take a break and uh, catch you guys up with the progress of the build. So let me turn this around so you can see the filter. And so I wasn't kidding, I am standing inside the filter box. Uh, it is uh, a massive filter box, obviously, <laughs> um, which is key because this is a massive aquarium. So I just thought it would help to give the, uh, the scale of this. Uh, it's hard to get it all in frame, but it is a massive filter box uh, and it is very tall. So you're talking uh, four feet of height and then uh, five feet by six feet. So there's a huge amount of uh, material that's gonna go in here for filtering. Uh, in this wetland filter. There's gonna be a lot of layers coming up before that water cascades back into the rest of the aquarium, as well as there's gonna be an entire wetland ecosystem of plants growing up above out of that substrate. So it's gonna be something special. So I'm gonna finish screwing in this baffle for the wetland filter, and then I'll pop back out of the tank and uh, we'll take a look at the all the top bracing which is done, the wetland filter which will be done as far as framing goes and uh, the front windows which are close to done, but we'll show you all that in just a minute. And then after that, we get into skinning the tank, which is oh so fun, dragging uh, four by eight sheets of three quarter inch plywood, but I got a whole truck full of it, so uh, I'm gonna bring it down here and uh, we're gonna get to that pretty soon. Now this is a very interesting one and one that's near and dear to my heart and actually one that's had early success and it's why we're doing a wetland filter in the 4500 gallon. So this is the 315 gallon DIY build. This is the resulting tank from that build series and you can see that uh, we have cichlids in here. We have uh, uh, Jack, electric blue Jack Dempsey's, we have uh, green phantom plecos and of course we have thin bar silver dollars and this is a brand new tank. This is just establishing and for how long it's been around it is doing amazing and you know with the aquatic goats, the uh, silver dollars, you're not going to have a lot of aquatic plants so we just have some area. but what we do have is a lot of terrestrial plants in the top uh, that some of them are tied off to the wood root and most of them are in the wetland filter and this is the part over here that's doing the real magic. This wetland filter has brought this thing from a soupy mess of material that I just dumped in here. I didn't clean any of the sand or anything. I just took all a bunch of old material with all the you know all the gunk in it and I put it in here and I added the bacteria and the water flow of the wetland filter and I've just let it balance out itself and it did it in record time and you can see it isn't you know it isn't perfectly balanced you and you can see that there's you know some blue green uh, algae on the sand and also there's some buildup of mulm which you know the mulm itself is fine it's inorganic but it's just sitting there right you can see all along here you've got mulm buildup because you have the water flow coming across from the wetland filter down to this side here and then it's just sort of settling everything back over there so uh, as impressive as the wetland filter has been and as amazing a job is doing in terms of filtering the water and as far as cleaning the water, we do have water flow issues in this aquarium. We, do, we don't want to have the mulm just settling like that. Uh, so that's the thing that needs to be done here is adding water flow. And that's also something, a big lesson I learned with the 3,000 gallon with the big cichlids is you really, really need a lot of water flow, especially down low to keep all that stuff settled up so it can work its way into the wetland filter, get trapped in the bottom, and then we can take it out with uh, by suctioning out through that tube that we have to, for the clean out underneath the wetland filter. So all in all, 
Obviously, I'm hugely happy with the wetland filter, which is why I'm building it into my new mega tanks. Okay, so now we're back outside the filter, and uh, you can see that that is the uh, finished framing for the baffle that separates the aquarium from the wetland filter box. And uh, yeah, so uh, framing is done there, and you can see we have two windows completely framed. See on the inside, you see where the glass is going to go in here, and uh, two more windows that are partially framed. And you can see popping out of the aquarium, so I just need to finish the framing on these two windows over here. These two are done, and then it will be time to start skinning the inside of the aquarium. As well as you can see, all the top bracing is done, all 33 feet of the aquarium, we're good to go. So it is really, really coming along. And in this video, we're also going to answer the age old question. How many screws should you put in the frame of your uh, aquarium window? Well, and the answer is, I don't want to have to find out. I just buy an extra $50 worth of screws and I make sure I overkill the beep out of it. <laughs> so I like to sleep at night. And you know, there's a lot of water. Who wants to find out what the exact thresholds are of these materials? Let's just, uh, let's, let's overkill it. So we're on to a major milestone here. We're done with framing and we're going with sheathing. So you can see we've got a big four by eight, three quarter inch sheet up here. And you can see that every, post every every piece of the framing here has construction construction adhesive on it and uh, now it's time for me to go ahead and move this back into place and get it screwed in so now on to the 750 gallon amazonian islands this is another one of our big success stories even though there's some room to improvement and there's some techniques i want to add to this aquarium to make it better so what do we have we have a 750 gallon aquarium with some big cichlids that get fed very heavy and we don't have out of control algae or anything like that. We have a pretty balanced system. Uh, you can see all those roots coming down and that's because, yep, we have a lot of pothos on top and down here in the filter underneath, we have a very nice vegetable filter that's doing a great job. And this is where I wanna augment the aquarium. We have that first chamber where it's only being oxygenated from the water coming down from the aquarium. So what I want to do is add an air pump and supercharge this moving bed filter to speed up that progress. As well as this tank is doing, I think it could be doing a lot better with that addition. I think it's going to improve it quite a bit. And uh, I have done a couple water changes over, over what I expected to do in the first year of this aquarium to get it in balance. It's now actually getting in balance and the addition of supercharging that moving bed filter in the front, super oxygenating that, I think is gonna take this aquarium over the top. And as good as it looks now, it will look even better and it'll support even more beautiful schools of Tetra mixed in with these awesome cichlids. So sometimes uh, it's, a, it's not always a question of something not working or working, it's something that works well but could work even better. And that's what the 750 gallon, that's, that's basic. <clears throat> And that's where we find ourselves with the 750 gallon Amazonian Island. Okay, so that's the very first piece tacked into place. Uh, I just have a, a row across the top, the bottom, and one in the middle. I need to go uh, up and down each piece of framing. So you see I've transferred my lines on the top so I can see where my framing is behind the plywood so I can have my uh, straight line of screws biting into that wood and holding this plywood into place. All right, this is uh, one of many. <laughs> so back to work for me. And since we're here at the Double DIY Builds, we might as well take a look at the 600 gallon Asian Jungle and uh, another success story and another situation where I'm doing things different and I'm going to make uh, an addition to it. So as you can see up top, no plants up top. That's because we have a lot of plants in the aquarium. Now we just did a big pruning back, so it looks a little bare now, but uh, the jungle will be rekindled, of course, and uh, we, we wanna basically use a lot of the uh, internal plants to keep it a jungle to take out nutrients, so we don't wanna do pothos on top. Uh, we'll kinda be in that same situation with the 125 where uh, I'd really have to start dosing nitrates pretty hard, and right now I'm not having to do that. I'm not having to clean the glass, uh, so it's in pretty good balance. But what I do wanna do is augment uh, the filtration system. So you can see our vegetable filter in the back there is kicking butt in a major way. Uh, it is just stripping nitrates out of here. 
but we have the front chamber where again, we have only the water flow coming down into this moving bed and we don't have oxygenation in there, uh, additional from an air pump. So I wanna also add an air pump and air stones to this front, this moving bed front uh, chamber and super oxygenate that and just basically take this tank over the top. Then of course, we just have our lazy river over here for our denitrification again uh, through bacteria. So overall, the 600 Asian jungle is in pretty good balance. Um, I do continue to do some supplemental water changes just to remove tannins uh, from the water because there's that massive root wall in the back and that just introduced so many, so many tannins to the aquarium that I want to be able to see all the way into the back there super clearly and you cannot right now. So uh, that's what I'm working on in this and I think we're going to see huge dividends from adding oxygen to that front chamber. Okay, I wasn't kidding. The uh, 4,500 gallon, yeah, it's seen some serious progress. Let's get a closer look. All right, let's just start on the, uh, the far side of the aquarium. You can see that all of the windows are framed out. So all four windows are ready to go. All framed out, all good there. In fact, all the framing for the aquarium as a whole is complete. Of course, at the very end, I'll do top bracing and I'll do some uh, some framing for lights and for some parts of the aquascape, but that won't happen until long down the road because it'll be in my way uh, doing the rest of this work. But you can see that we're on to sheathing along the back there. So we've got uh, two in place, a third one going in, and uh, we're working our way down and we're gonna be sheathing the inside of the, the entire inside of the aquarium. As well as you can see, we've got all the framing done for the wetland filter. And uh, this is gonna be a monster. This is a monster box here. And uh, I'm very excited to see a wetland filter on this scale. And it's gonna be quite of a jungle growing out of there. It's got a perfect window for light. It's gonna be sweet. Uh, but at any rate, we're just gonna be sheathing that uh, as well as the rest of the tank. So, so obviously that's where progress ends on this video is what you see right now. But where do we pick up? What are you gonna see in the next video? Well, you're gonna see all the sheathing completed. In terms of the front, it is essentially completed because there's no sheathing to do there. We actually will apply fiberglass and pond shield right to this material. No reason to go sheath over top of it. Uh, and we will sheath the inside of the filter box and the outside here. So then what happens after that? Well, after sheathing, it's going to look like an aquarium, but then we get into the detail work. We're going to get into the filling. We're going to fill any imperfections in the wood with body filler. Then we're gonna sand that all down, we're gonna clean that up. Then we're gonna start doing fiberglassing and we're gonna fiberglass a lot of this tank, maybe the whole dang thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a big tank, I'm not cutting any corners. This thing is very strong. I'm gonna glass the entire tank. So we're gonna get the whole thing fiberglassed. We're gonna get that sanded down. We're gonna inspect that for any imperfections, fix any imperfections, get that nice and tight. And then after that, we get into epoxy coating. Uh, pond shield, multiple coats of pond shield, uh, and then we basically have the waterproof tub and we in install the windows after that. And at that point, you're filling it up. So what to expect in the next episode? We're going to get all this sheathing done. We're going to get the body filling done. And we're going to get into that fiberglassing. So as always, I really appreciate everyone checking out the video. I really appreciate all those uh, members and subscribers for the support. And uh, you're definitely going to want to check back because this monster is moving along at a pretty good pace. And this is going to be one heck of an aquarium when it's done. But I think the process along the way is just as enjoyable. I know I'm enjoying building it. And I know I'm going to enjoy stocking it and owning it and enjoying it in the future, viewing it. So, uh, so definitely stop back in for the next video and uh, enjoy the journey with me. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon.